Pete Calandra here. On today's Piano Roundup, I'll be taking a look at a handful of sampled grand pianos from Native Instruments, Spectrosonics, Spitfire Audio, and Synthogy. This set of instruments all sound great, are very useful, and each one has a specific character. There are links below for more information on each instrument. At the end of this video, I'll do a complete improvised performance on each piano, one after the other with no talking. There's also a timestamp for this in the description box below, so you can skip ahead at any point. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified, ring that bell. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. For the first piano, we'll take a look at Native Instruments Noir Pure. I'd like to play a little bit and then talk about the settings. beautiful sounding instrument. What I've done here is played around with the color control to make it brighter. If I bring this down. I'm not sure if this piano has soft pedal samples, but using the color control, you can actually almost simulate that. This control sounds a little bit to me like a bandpass filter. The dynamics knob controls how the piano responds to MIDI velocity. I'm trying to play the keyboard at the same velocity each time and you can hear how the color changes as it goes through the different dynamic layers. The reverb and the delay are effects that won't be on during this demo. I'd like to have everything nice and clean, and then at the end, when I do the run-through of all the different pianos, I'll add some FabFilter Pro R reverb to give me some ambience. Let me play around a little bit with the volume of the release samples here. My personal tastes are to have the release present, but not so loud that it overtakes the sound when I'm holding the sustain pedal down. I find that when the release samples are too loud, it can become very muddy. That's a little unnatural to me. I don't have these controls on. What's nice about having all this control is you can tailor the sound to your individual taste and to fit the kind of music you're playing. I'm a big fan of the rich low end on most Yamaha grand pianos. This comes along with a very beautifully crisp high end.
Moving along, we'll take a look at another Yamaha Grand Piano. This time, Spectrasonic's Keyscape C7. One thing that's a constant in Spectrasonic's sounds from Omnisphere, Trillion, and Keyscape is that they're very loud. Look right here, I've got the output at minus 11 dB, and it matches the volume of the Noir. That's not a comment on the quality of the sound, that's just something you should know about. The C7 piano is 7 foot 6, which is considerably shorter than the CFX of Noir. I own a C7, and I'm very familiar with the sound. Another really good sounding piano that's also inspiring to play. It's not quite as brilliant as the Noir, and the sound is a little bit more in your face, close mic'd. It's a very useful instrument. I believe this would be really good for pop music and rhythmic playing. Also good for blues, possibly. This is also great for some jazzy blues. You could load this into main stage and take it out on a gig. It's very punchy and it would cut right through a dense mix. As far as the settings go on this piano, one thing I find about some of the presets on this instrument is that the release is very unnatural. So I had to go in and adjust it. It's a little too short for my tastes. I don't like a long release sample on pianos. You just have to be a little bit careful because this instrument is close mic'd. The mechanical noises are a little bit more in your face as well. I prefer the release noises on the Noir, but this is still a great and very useful piano. The other bit is that when you're playing, you're not really focused in on the release samples as much as you are when you're doing this detailed work. Let me bring down some of the pedal noises again because while it's great to have them, my ear is not inside the piano. And I'd like to simulate what it's like when I'm sitting at my piano playing. Let me play this preset a little bit, untweaked. Because the piano is close mic'd, for my tastes, the release samples are a little bit too loud. As I found with the Noir piano, especially the Felt piano, there's a low rumble on the release samples that I wish I could specifically EQ because when you're playing with sustain pedal, it can be a little bit loud. That's one of the benefits of having the control is that you can tweak it so that when you're playing, you won't hear it. 
Let me turn the pedal noise up just a little bit. Having it there is great for simulating realism, but I'd like to have it just softer so that it sounds more like what I'm used to when I'm playing my piano. In real life, I don't have my ear an inch away from the felt that the pedal controls. I'm a couple of feet away. This controls the release time. You can make it longer or shorter. That's the LA Custom C7 Grand Piano from Spectrosonics. The next piano is Native Instruments Maverick, which is a vintage European grand piano. This piano has quite a bit of character to it. It's not quite as pristine and clean as the previous two pianos. It's really nice to have an instrument like this in your toolbox, and there are quite a few musical situations where a sound like this can be used effectively. Playing a sound like this in that style can add a lot of emotion to your production. Let's try broken arpeggios. Native Instruments also gives you quite a few ways to play around with the color of this instrument as well. I only have this tweaked a little bit. I can make it very punchy and bright, while this setting simulates having the soft pedal down. I'd like to emphasize yet again that having all these controls to change all the parameters of these sounds gives you a lot of tonal shaping possibilities. You can tailor the sound of these instruments to the piece of music you're playing, as well as your playing style, effectively giving you multiple pianos from one library.
Let's play around with the resonances on the pedal. Let me sustain a chord with the pedal down. You can use this kind of parameter change to help enhance the mood and emotional quality of your music. Let's bring this back down and back up to the original color that I had tweaked this to. This simulates whether you have the lid open or closed. This sounds more like an EQ change to me than actually having a new set of samples done with the lid down. You could do more tonal shaping in this area here. And while I'm not using it here, all of these native instruments libraries have beautiful reverb that you can employ. That's the Maverick really useful and rich piano. This sound can punch through a mix and also be very delicate. That's the Maverick, and next up is Native Instruments Grandeur, which is a more modern European concert piano. This concert grand is very full and rich sounding as is typical with European grands. I didn't play around too much with the tone because I liked the way it came out of the box. I did play around a little bit with the resonance control. I left the dynamic range as it was. It looks like I've only tweaked the resonances. Again, you can simulate the soft pedal using this control. As on the last piano, playing around with the resonance control adds that choir-like effect to the sustained notes. What I think would be a really great feature would be to have a separate output for the resonance control. This way, you can treat that with some time-based effects and create really haunting ambiences. Something like chorus or shimmer or black hole reverb. For example, if I took this particular sound and then had the resonance going out of a separate output and transposing that up an octave and then blending it back with the original signal, that would be an amazing sound, I think. That's the Grander by Native Instruments. The next piano is not really a pure piano. 
It's part of the Spitfire Audio Hauschka Sample Library, which contains an amazing amount of prepared piano and treated piano samples, and they also have this pure piano sample that you can use as part of that library. As such, I don't think that they went into great detail sampling this piano. There's probably only a few dynamic layers and maybe a few round robins. While this wouldn't be my first choice for solo piano, as part of the Hauschka library, this is very useful to blend in with the prepared piano and the treated piano samples. And when you roll the dice on this grid, you can come up with interesting combinations of sound. Let's go back to the pure piano sample. Not a huge dynamic range on this piano, but again, as part of the package, it's very useful. The next set of pianos on this comparison can be found in Synthegy's Ivory. The first piano is the German D, which is a Steinway D piano. For a long time, this was my favorite piano, and I created this clean and dry patch to use as a starting point when I'm writing. Let's take a listen. This library actually has soft pedal samples. I made a program here that's just pedal. soft pedal that's very that's useful for emotive film scoring. There's a lot of control over the sound of this piano as well. 
Let's take a look at the shimmer parameter and see what that does. That's adding a lot of resonance to the sound. This parameter is really useful in creating slowly evolving ethereal textures. You can also play around with the key noise level. You can also play around with the sustain resonance. Again, useful for dreamy ethereal textures. You can also add some sympathetic string resonance. This is not sampled string resonance. This is synthesized or generated somehow. One of the things that I find very enjoyable about this instrument is that the feel and the response of the program is very immediate and it does feel a little bit more like playing a real piano than any other program that I've played. Especially the way I have it tweaked to my specific tastes and combining that with playing it on this weighted Yamaha CP4 controller it can be very expressive. Let's take a look at the next piano which is Synthogy's American Concert D, which again is an American-made Steinway piano. And while I don't have a specific preset for this piano, I have turned off the internal reverb. I like this piano. It's a little brighter than the German D. And while I tend to use the German D more, this is still a very useful piano. The last piano we'll be looking at today is also from Synthogy, and it's the Ivory Bosendorfer 290.
and that's a beautiful piano as well. I tend not to use this one too often, but it's really nice to have. What I'd like to do next, before I do a complete run-through, is to go one by one and play some of the low notes, and then go back and play some of the high notes so that you can hear very quickly in order the different timbres of these instruments. So we'll start from the top and head all the way down, starting with the noir. Keyscape. Maverick. The Grandeur. Hauschka. German D, Ivory. Once more. American D. Bosendorfer. Rich overtones in the last two pianos. Okay, in the same order, let's now do some of the high notes. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. The rest of this video will feature improvised pieces on each piano, one after the other, with no talking. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified, ring that bell. I've been Pete Calandra. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.